What's up everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here to show you 14 habits that might be holding you back on guitar. The first thing that I notice that seems to get a lot of people when they first start out is they learn how to play pretty well in the beginning, but they're out of tune. So even if they're playing perfect chords, it might sound like this. So I'm playing the right chords, but it just something's wrong, you know, it sounds bad. And the worst thing is when someone's actually playing well, and the only thing holding them back is that one string is a little bit out. And what I did was I took my third string, the G, and I just brought it down a little bit just to show you that that's all it takes to ruin your sound. So if I were to bring the G back to where it's supposed to be, I just turned it a little bit. So one easy way to do it is just to buy one of these clip-on tuners. They're pretty cheap and they're easy to use and uh, we do go over how to use them on the website but um, it's kind of self-explanatory once you get going you just need to know the names of the strings and which way to turn the knobs. Another thing that I see, the second habit, is when people try to play lead guitar in the beginning. It, they tend to want to bend the strings because they see all their guitar heroes doing that, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Steve Ray Vaughan, all those guys and they go to bend their strings. And even if they're decent at the technique of bending, if their ear isn't used to the sound of a correct bend, they may overshoot it or undershoot it. I hear this all the time. So the other day I had a student, he was playing uh, a solo, and he was overshooting the bend, and it sounded like this. It just something didn't sit right when he was playing it. And uh, I'll do that same example, but I'll show you what it's like when you underbend. I hear that a lot too. So somebody's going for this epic solo and they're about to hit a nice bend and all of a sudden it just comes up short. Real quick, if you want to, set up your uh, tuner to one of the notes you're trying to bend to. I'll just do a quick little mini lesson on this. Hit the note, bend it, and watch your tuner and see if you can get it to go right exactly where you want it to go. So for example, if I'm on the second string, 15th fret, and I want to bend it up a whole step, if you know your theory, the D, up a whole step will be E. So if you watch your tuner as you're bending, as soon as it gets to the center of the E, you're in tune. And then you can memorize how it feels to play the bend correctly. The third bad habit that I see people doing that hold people back all the time is they push way too hard when they play guitar. So what they do is instead of just hitting this note, for example, which is D, they'll hit it, but they'll be pushing so hard they'll actually push the note a tiny bit sharp. So that doesn't seem like a huge deal when you're by yourself. Like if you go, see, watch this. That's what it should be. Did you hear it come up just a tiny bit? And even that little bit can make things sound funny, especially if you're playing with other people or if you're playing chords, because you'll be pushing notes out and other notes won't be being pushed as hard. And all of a sudden you'll have this clash and it just won't sound correct. And then you'll go check your tuning. You'll think, oh, it must be habit one. Okay, I better fix that. And you'll come back and it'll still be bad. You're probably pushing way too hard. If you really think about all you have to do to make a note sound is touch the string on the metal fret. You don't have to push it into the wood, everybody thinks that. If you've ever seen a scalloped guitar neck, they actually take the wood that's back on the fretboard and they scoop it out so that when they press down on the string, you really are only hitting the metal. You're not touching the wood. The string isn't pushing into the wood. That's all stuff that is uh, adding too much energy to what you're doing. You don't have to waste all that energy. Guitar should feel very effortless when you play. You shouldn't get tired like after five minutes. Another big habit that I noticed some people do is they have zero vibrato. And don't get me wrong, some artists never use vibrato, but sometimes I'd say nine out of 10 times when I see a beginner uh, not doing any vibrato, it's usually because they haven't developed it quite yet to where they feel comfortable using it. So let me show you an example of using zero vibrato, and I'll show you the difference when you add just a little bit, how much of a, how much of a big difference just a little can make. So here's with zero. <laughs> See, it's kind of flat sounding, a little bit lifeless. Now, if you just add a little bit of vibrato to that. I 
love that song. A bad habit that people seem to do a lot when they're not super confident yet with the guitar is they overthink as they're playing. And what that does is it not only just kind of takes you away from playing and feeling music, but it makes your playing just real rigid. And sometimes I'm watching people play and their eyes are so intense, they're looking at their guitar and you can tell they're thinking every single note they're doing. Every single uh, time they're picking, they're thinking, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this. And at least they're thinking about what they're playing. They're not thinking of something they have to do tomorrow or whatever. But even if you're being present in that way and you're thinking, it's really hard to also consider that playing. It just takes something away from your playing that translates to the listener. So I'll show you an example of overthinking while you're playing. And I'm going to exaggerate a little bit because, I mean, I really want you to get the point. Uh, but I have seen people do this sometimes up to this level. So let's say we're playing Paranoid or something. Oh, by the way, when you're overthinking, you tend to play too hard too. That happens as well. Totally exaggerating, but you kind of get the point. So in my head, I was thinking, 12, 14, hammer on. Okay, now I have to do this. Now we're doing the rhythm part. E, then D. Now you could shut that all off as soon as you get uh, more comfortable and confident with the guitar. And then what you do is you start to see it from a different perspective. And it's mostly playing and watching yourself, observing yourself playing, and you're actually kind of just sitting back and going, oh, this is happening. It's a different way to perceive guitar as you're playing it, but you do have to get to a certain level to really click with this concept. So now if I play it, I've played it so many times that it just kind of plays itself and I can relax. I don't have to think as I'm playing. I just kind of watch and I observe. And it comes off a little bit smoother, I would say. It uh, is easier to listen to, in my opinion. And when you have a stage full of people that aren't overthinking as they're playing, and they're actually just enjoying the music in themselves as they play, it just comes off and feels much better. I want to listen to those kind of bands. I don't want to see five people on stage all overthinking, and uh, lead, which leads to overplaying as well. Let's take that same riff, and I want to show you another really bad habit, and this one can completely sink your playing. And that's just having a poor sense of timing, not being able to keep a good rhythm. And I see people trying, they start tapping their foot, they're not sure what to do. It's a big part of our website, by the way, is rhythm, because I do. I did play drums longer than guitar, so I started playing drums when I was nine years old, I believe. I started banging on ice cream buckets and that old story. But when you play without rhythm, it's really hard to feel a riff come to life. So if I'm playing that paranoid riff, and let's say I'm doing this. <laughs> I've heard people play it like that before. Some of that also might be overthinking, by the way, so this kind of goes along with that other bad habit of overthinking. Because the more you think, the less you're focusing on the internal beat of the riff, and it's easy to let it just get away from you. So once you're comfortable, a lot of this has to do with confidence over time, by the way. Once you do establish confidence in your instrument, all this stuff does naturally happen, but you can also cut it off right away and start to fix things immediately if, you already, if you're aware of them. That's the whole purpose of this video, to make people aware that they might be doing some of these things. So let's say I'm doing the rhythm now and I don't have to think about it and I can just kind of let the rhythm flow because I have a better sense of rhythm. So that really brought it together, just having that internal click. Another habit that I see a lot of people do it's not really, I would say, a habit, but it's just a lack of awareness when it comes to your own tone. And I fell victim to this for a long time. It took me a lot of years before I actually thought, how does my guitar sound coming out of my amp? What I would do is I would focus so much on the playing part that I neglected hearing the sounds that were coming out. So when I changed that awareness, it really helped. For example, the other day we were doing a, a dress rehearsal practice and one of my students was playing a lead guitar part. And she had her tone knobs all the way down on her guitar, and she was trying to do the solo, uh, a solo, and it went like this. You get the idea. 
and she went through the entire solo and I stopped the band and I was like what's what do you think is wrong right now and she had no idea she's like I played it right everything seemed fine and then I asked her to play it again just herself and you could barely hear her guitar because there was no high end because all her tone knobs were d dialed back so then I said okay let's turn up the tone knobs once now let's try it especially this part really shine through once she turned up her toe knob and I thought about that I'm like that's so much like I used to be where I would not really even notice my playing I'd be like okay my amp is on my guitar is plugged in I'm playing the right stuff it must be right and then you know later on you listen to a recording or something you're like I had way too much distortion going on or I couldn't even hear myself because my tone was turned down or I was on the wrong pickup. So start to listen to yourself, record yourself, do whatever you can. The best thing is to hear it in the moment. So while you're playing with your friends or in a band or even solo, ask, does this even sound good coming out of my amp? And if it doesn't, don't be afraid to mess with knobs, experiment. You'd be surprised how many people don't really know what to do to fix a sound if it doesn't sound right. But that's a great lesson just by doing that. You can always tell someone doesn't really know what they're doing yet on the guitar if they have really old strings on their guitar and when they play you can almost hear that weird chorusy sound because the string is rusting away or their action's super high or their bridge is all messed up. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen uh, to your guitar over the course of time and if you don't know what you're doing and you're not replacing your strings, you're not conditioning the neck right, uh, things can go bad really fast. So that's a habit that a lot of people have right away that they eventually have to fix on a necessity because their strings start breaking, their guitar keeps going out of tune because the strings are old. You'd be surprised how many people play for like a year and I ask, when's the last time you changed strings? And they say, I've never even put on a string. And then I feel their guitar or I try to clean it off and there's black stuff all over the strings. And it's a good indication that you're still at a certain level of the guitar. So to get past that, to move forward, Start to understand what it takes to maintain your guitar. I know some people just like to bring their guitars to luthiers and, and have them fix everything. But I really, and I really think it's a good idea to have the basics down yourself as well. Be able to change your own strings. Know what gauge strings you use, how to put them on, how to condition the neck so it doesn't crack, how not to leave your guitar in the car when it's hot or cold out or if you don't want it to get stolen or whatever. But there's a lot of things, little things, that you learn just by you know making mistakes or you know over time you just see other guitar players doing things and you start to ask questions, hopefully. One thing you'll notice if you have this bad habit is that nobody seems to want to play with you. And that's because you do not play well with others. This has a little bit to do with the awareness factor that I talked about earlier, that if you get locked in and you zero in so much on your own playing that you don't even notice what's going on around you, including your tone like I talked about too. See, these all kind of blend together. Other people aren't going to want to jam with you because if they're playing one thing and you're speeding ahead or you're even on the wrong section, it's just never going to work out, especially with, you know, with one person, but especially with a full band. When you join a band, you learn that you have to be aware of everybody else playing with you. And the best players eventually forget really what they're doing. Like I said before, they're just observing themselves playing. But they watch the whole room and they listen. So they're thinking, am I too loud? Am I too quiet? What's the bass player doing? Oh, he's switching. Okay, I better switch with them or whatever. And if everyone in the band has an awareness, you have a very uh, cohesive unit. And that's what a good band is. It's when they all just kind of know every little movement. There was a, when I was in a band for a long time as a kid growing up, my teenage band, I could look at my drummer and just the way I saw the corner of his eye, I could tell we're going to another part. Or my singer would like do something. I would just notice his mannerisms and I would be ready for the next thing. So that's a blessing if you can get, have a tight-knit group and you guys can start to get to that level with reading each other but just on your own um, start off when you're playing to get so comfortable that you don't only have to zero in on your own instrument then when other people get introduced to the mix you won't be this person doing this stuff you know you'd be like oh cool you're doing that okay I'll do this and it's a much better way to get into the whole group playing uh, scenario and it'll get you out of your basement and hopefully onto the stage quicker one thing that I also see is people playing just fine. They're doing everything correctly, but they just don't know how to mute their strings. And what happens, let's say I just add more distortion to this thing. You start to play with more distortion, let's say. And because in clean sound, you don't always notice it as much. And you're trying to do something kind of cool up here. Maybe you're just doing some lead stuff. And before you know it, your guitar, watch this. See, I'm just tapping the body and all that noise is happening. 
Well, if you start playing over the top of that, actually it sounded kind of cool, but you start playing over the top of it and you have this mess underneath everything you're playing and sometimes it can totally get out in the way of what you're trying to actually do. So let's say you're playing some notes. Sounds like Don, Don Henley. But you have all this noise happening and you're playing and you're accidentally hitting other strings. It's really funny because once you're so used to muting your strings, it's hard to not mute your strings. I had to force that right now. But it sounded like there was a constant ringing underneath everything I just played. And that can be cool if you're doing a solo and you're doing that on purpose. But if you're playing with other people, those open notes start clashing with the notes that they're doing. And before you know it, you've got a big mess happening. It's kind of like if you're trying to uh, do a drawing and your palm keeps rubbing against the, uh, the paper and all the pencil stuff starts smearing. It's all those clean lines that you wanted to draw are all of a sudden smeared. And like I said before, that could be kind of cool. But in a lot of situations, you want cleaner sounds. So let's say I'm just kind of messing around in that same area, but I'm doing good muting. By the way, left hand and right hand muting. <laughs> See dead quiet in between everything. So I'm able to control the level of muting that I do. But a big thing I like to preach, especially on the site, we really focus on the left hand muting. And you'd be surprised, with one finger you can mute strings underneath, above your finger, while playing the note you're actually playing. And then if you get your thumb and other fingers into the mix, you can get pretty good at ma uh, you can get pretty good at mastering the art of muting with your left hand. And then your right hand does some palm muting, and before you know it, you have total control over the sound. And like I said before, you can introduce some noise if you want to, which can be very cool, or you can totally make it clean if you really want uh, extra sharp notes while you play. So if I want a, just a really clean note. <laughs> Pretty clean. If I want a little bit of noise with it. See that? A lot of stuff happening with it versus totally clean. Great having that much control over the noise factor because then you're in control of it. It's not controlling you as you're playing. This isn't going to seem like a bad habit uh, enough to actually mention it on the video, but it's very important if you're if you want to start to hang out with other musicians and be part of the musician community, one thing you don't want to do is talk yourself up too much as far as uh, your skills. And you'll notice that the better the player, the less they do that. The more amateur someone is, the more they seem to have to compensate for not feeling as confident in their playing. So you'll see a lot of uh, not so good guitar players talking like they're Eddie Van Halen or something. It's really interesting because I always thought, you know, you're going to have to back it up someday, you know? So Anyone who does that, first of all, nobody really likes to play with people that do that kind of thing anyway. And second of all, it usually means you should, you know, stop talking and go home and probably practice and get yourself up to that level. I feel kind of like a jerk saying all this stuff, but it's true. Uh, to the level where you don't feel like you have to, you know, announce to the world that you're really good at guitar. So keep that in mind. Even if you are a decent player, you don't have to tell people. Just prove it with your playing. That's a lesson I had to learn early on, too. I call it the uh, four stages of guitar center playing, and one of them is you're not that good, but you turn the amp up really loud, and it's almost like you're trying to compensate by turning up, and then you play, and it's one of those things where someone who's really good doesn't have to be loud and boastful about about being good, and uh, it's just kind of a funny thing because usually, not always, the better you get, the less you really care if other people know that you're good. You usually just let your playing do the talking, and that's all you really need. You don't have to show off by, you know, telling everybody who you've played with or what kind of songs you can play or what techniques you have. So keep that in mind. It might help you out uh, as far as just getting along with other musicians and being in the right circles in the future. A big indicator that somebody isn't quite where they should be as far as guitar skill is when they can play a lot of things and it sounds great, but the second you're just jamming and you say, take a solo, they blank. They blank out and they kind of, you know, they get the deer in the headlights look and they're not sure what to do. So maybe they'll go to some solo that they know it sounds good and they'll just play that. What that proves is that the person isn't flexible enough to be able to improvise and go with some changes. You'll learn right away if you play in a band uh, that things don't always go according to plan and sometimes you never know you might start a song in a different key and something crazy might happen or the other guitar player has a capo on the wrong fret and all of a sudden the song is a half step higher or lower 
And when that happens and you don't know how to change with that, it kind of shows that you have a little bit of a inadequacy in that area. And so what you want to do is you want to improve your improvising. And uh, this also ties into knowing your theory, which we're going to talk about in a little while in another habit. But being able, being able to improvise doesn't just mean being able to make stuff up um, in certain keys. It also means being able to improvise by changing with whatever's happening. So if somebody's playing like a blues thing, or let's say this is a real generic example. It's the end of the night, you're going to play some old... blues rock thing, and someone's like, take a solo, and you don't know what to do. That's a great sign that you need to, uh, once again, go home, hit the woodshed, and start to learn about improvising and how scales work with, you know, chords and what to do in certain situations. And there's a lot that goes into it, by the way. We try to go in depth with that on the website. But if you even know one scale really well and you're able to play it in different situations, that, that's a really good way to get started. Just start small and then increase as you get better. And on a very high level, you'll be able to play what you hear. And that's a huge topic we're going to cover in the future. I'm working on a whole section of it on the website right now. Because in the end, isn't that what you want to do? You want to be able to hear something and just play it instantly. So that's going to be a really high level area that we're going to reach pretty soon. But for right now, just start to put on some backing tracks on YouTube, let's say, and uh, just play along and see if you can get halfway decent at improvising at this point so that in the future you're not caught off guard. Some people might argue with this one, but I think it's a bad habit to not be able to stand up and play. And so if you bought a strap or you got one for free, or not, well, not for free usually, but if uh, you got a strap with your guitar when you bought it and you've never used it, you're really missing out. It's Easy to sit and practice, right? I don't know many people that stand up and practice scales all day, but don't neglect the fact that someday you're probably going to be standing up on stage and moving around, and you want to be able to handle that aspect of playing. And you're going to notice that the guitar looks very different from up here when you're looking down from standing. I'm not standing right now, obviously, but I'm kind of pretending. And all of a sudden, it's really hard to tip your guitar and look at your fretboard the way sometimes people do when they sit. So when you're standing, all you see is the side of your guitar, and the six strings become one string because you're looking at it from the side. This perspective is bizarre. So you're going to get nervous. You're not going to be able to find the strings like you used to be able to, and a lot of things happen. You want to do this in the comfort of your own basement right now, or practice room, wherever that is, not on stage. You don't want to wait a day before you're about to play a show go to band practice, throw on a strap for the first time, and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I can't play anything. That's such a terrible feeling. Like we mentioned before, I wanted to give it its own habit because it's such a big deal, and it's a big reason why I even started the website, and that is a lot of people can play, but when you say, oh, can you do this F minor chord, or you ask them to do a certain scale or mode, they freeze and they're not sure what you're talking about. And to me, it's not always the you know, the end of the world if you don't know a lot of theory. There's a lot of great guitar players and a lot of people, especially in the comments, will say, that person don't, knows nothing about theory and look at how great they are. And I would argue that, you know, they probably know more than you think they do. I don't think Angus Young picks up the guitar and goes, I have no idea what these strings are called, but wow, watch this, you know. So in my opinion, uh, it's really important to know your basics as far as open chord names, uh, to, the bar chords when you move them around, being able to find the chords that you're looking for, major, minor, seven, all that stuff, and then being able to attach scales to it. So if you're communicating with other musicians, let's say there's a piano player over there, and you're like, hey, can you do a C major, whatever, you know, just throw out some scales. And if you're able to say things back and forth like that at that level, say, hey, we're going to play a one, six, four, five progression, that kind of thing, you start to see that you understand each other on a different level. And I've found myself being able to play in many situations because I know my theory. And so if somebody throws me a curveball, like if all of a sudden we're in the key of G minor instead of B minor, I'm able to shift things over and uh, just keep rolling with it. It's a great feeling to be able to do that. Okay, so that I believe that was 14 habits that are probably holding you back. And even if just a couple of them can be fixed, let's say you've just had one or two of those habits, if you could tighten those up and uh, you know start working on those, you'd be amazed at how fast you could jump up the levels as far as uh, your confidence when you play. Notice I mentioned confidence all the time. Like I said earlier, the more confident you get, the more a lot of these seem to start to fix themselves. But I think you can give yourself a boost of confidence if you're aware that you even do these things. So see if any of those can help you out. And uh, let me know in the comments if they have. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.